I went ahead and bought some more silver. Once again, we have a junk silver, 90% silver constitutional bag that I need to hunt and search through. And then we have my goodie bag. He always puts the barber and older stuff, sometimes SLQs, to the side for me so that I can go ahead and cherry pick through those as well. Let's see if we can get any awesome goodies in this hunt today. Hey everyone, it's Rob Finds Treasure. Welcome back to my channel. As you know, I do like periodically buying some silver, not only for my stack, but for my streams and to sort through for my collection. Sometimes we get lucky and find some better dates or some varieties, but typically most of this stuff, because of the amount I paid for it, is not going to be your top of the line goodies. This bag, I pay your going rate a certain time's face for this 90%, and I pay a little bit up on the older stuff, only because it's harder to get. So as normal, he put together a bag of stuff that I always tell him to hold for me, and then of course, I bought all of the 90% that he had available. I will say at the beginning of this video that I'm a little disappointed that he didn't have any more halves. There are some halves in here. I did see some half dollars, but there wasn't very much, and I asked him if he had more, and he said he's just low on half dollars. So... Not sure how many I'll get in there, but we'll take a peek at those as well. Typically, what I like to do is save this bag for last. What we'll do first is dump this bag out, and as always, I'll get it sorted by denomination and type, and then we'll start looking for any key dates, better dates, or even varieties throughout. Let me go ahead and dump it out first, and let's see what goodies are in this bag. Now that's a lot of silver. We even had a runaway Roosevelt to boot. All right, let me go ahead and get this sorted by denomination and type, and we'll bring it back in. As I'm sorting, if I find something, I'll definitely bring it back. All right, we've got that first sort done. There were an assortment of half dollars, some 64s, some Benjis, and some Walkers. I will go through these on what we have as far as dates and mints. These are all the 60s quarters, and there are some better ones in there, which I will obviously check for varieties on these. That's the 50s, the 40s, and a nice little stack of 30s. No 32s in there. I already saw the dates, but I haven't seen the mints. We've got a little small stack of Merc dimes, and the bulk of the dimes are Roosevelt's. Almost two full rolls of those. Probably two full rolls if I counted them out, but that's what we got. Let me go ahead and check the half dollars first. I'll bring you guys in with any fines. So for the half dollars, nothing really exciting. Your common Walkers, Benjis, and Kennedys, no DDOs, no DDRs, no varieties. The best finds for the Walkers, we did get a 1917P, a 1917S reverse mint mark, and a 1918 Philadelphia. No value in these as far as additional value. They're pretty much slick as can be, but you can read the dates, and this one does have an S mint mark on the reverse, which is always a cool find. We'll just sleeve those up, use them for the streams, and now we've got the tough task of going through all of the 60s quarters, and what I think I'll do is I'll segregate them by the nicer ones versus the ones that aren't as nice, and then check the nicer ones for any varieties. Let me do that next, and then we'll be back. Well, I finished going through the 60s quarters, and I was being picky. These are the nicest quarters in there, and we'll get to these ones in a second. I only got a handful of pretty close to BU quarters in the 64 year, 63 year, and a couple of nice 60s over here. Maybe one was an end coin that got toned. But these three 1960Ps are in great shape. They just have some end coin toning, but that's not why they're pulled out. I pulled them out because of the five 1960 coins that were in really nice shape. When I scoped them, take a look at this. Three of them are the proof reverses. 1960 proof reverse, bigger space between E and S, bolded tail feathers, and of course the connected A to the leaf. There's three really nice 1960 Philadelphia minted proof reverses. And even though the other ones are toned, that one is in great shape. 
I might consider submitting this one and sleeving these two up. They do have toning, like I said, but they're in fantastic shape. And the reverses are BU. So I think they were part of a original bank wrap roll at some point, or somebody just had them rolled up for a long time. Either way, I'm going to stop touching them. I know everyone's going to get mad that I'm touching them, but these were in a bag just being thrown around. Let me go ahead and flip these up. We have three 1960p proof reverses, and I'll bring up PCGS to let you know what the value is, maybe on that 1960 if we get an MS65. So I've got them flipped up, and I will say after close inspection, there is a ding mark to the right of GW's bust on this coin, and that will prevent it from getting anything higher than a 63, in my opinion. So that being said, the cost of submission and the variety designation would pretty much match the value of the coin at $40 and an, and an MS63. If it was a 64, it'd be 50. If it was a 65, it'd be 60. And obviously it would go up even more if we got in the higher grades. Look at a 66 plus and a 67 is two grand. Unfortunately, as nice as it is, it was in a bag of loose coins, so it did get a scratch, and it's not going to be a submitter. And after inspecting all of them, like I said, none of them are submitters, but always fun to add nice ones to the collection. I'm sure this one will upgrade the current one I have. Now that we've done the 60s, let's move on to the 50s, and I'll bring you guys in after I sort them and if we find any varieties. Well, we've gone through the 50s quarters, and you know what? We did have some good finds. First of all, I've never really gotten as many 1950 quarters as I got in this lot. We had two 50Ps, one 50D, but not the D over S, and three better dates, lower mintage, just over 10 million minted 50Ss. I checked them all. None of them are the S over D. This is probably the nicest one. The toning is kind of throwing off the look, but it's probably in an AU grade. But yeah, I'll take it because I actually need one of these for my backup silver quarter set because it's such a low mint. Again, no 50 S's over D's or 50 D over S's, but we did find a couple of more proof reverse quarters and I don't find this many. This is a pretty nice 1957 Philadelphia proof reverse. Pretty cool. FS901, I believe, type B. And then we also had a really nice 1958 proof reverse as well. It's a stunning quarter. Unfortunately, once again, it does have a nice scratch across his face and behind. Now, I'll go ahead and show that to you. We've got a scratch there, some dings there, and a scratch right there across his neck. Unbelievable. So, unfortunately, while it has unk details, it's going to get a scratch grade, and I wouldn't even submit it in this condition. This one's a little more valuable than 1960 per grade starting at 63. Unfortunately, it's scratched. We'll still sleeve them up, though, because I do collect those, and I have to search my collection to see if I have a better one than either of them before I put them for my streams. Now that we've done the 50s, time to move on to the 40s. Well, we finished the 40s, and not much to say, but we did actually find a very tough date. It is terrible, probably in that AG3 to G4 range, but that's a 1940D. 1940D doesn't have very many minted, probably less than 3 million. I'll put a graphic on the screen to put the minage, but I know it's low. So I went ahead and checked PCGS's price guide report. And on the 1940D, even in a G4 grade is about eight bucks. But look at the values that have jumped up in a mint state grade on that coin. It is a tough coin to find, especially in high grade. You will find it in junk bins in low grade. Would have been nice if it would have been right around that VFXF range. Would have been a $20 coin or more. But in this grade, man, being AG, it's probably still cool. But it was nice to see. I don't need it. Just figured I'd show it. It's good seeing a better date in your quarter hunt. Now let's go to the 30s and finish up the GWs. And hopefully we find something good. Well, I said I hope I find something good in the 30s. And we found four goodies. I've already checked all these. There is no better dates, no better condition, no varieties. First and foremost, we did find a 1938 Philadelphia. Yeah, it's in trashy shape, but it still fetches a lot more than face value, even in lower grades. Check PCGS, eight bucks in a G4. That's probably what that one is. Take a look at this. Tough date, 1936 Denver and 1936 Denver. 
1936 Denver is definitely a tougher date to get. I think there's probably around five and a half million. Again, I'll put a graphic underneath, but I usually don't find 36 Ds in my junk silver purchases, and we got two in this one. I'll definitely take that, and I understand that they're in cool grade or very low grade, probably G4 to be honest, at best, with the rim being worn away and very light on the details, but nice seeing those. I brought up the 36 D, and even in a G4 grade, it's still around a $12 coin. I'm not sure if someone would fetch $12 for these bad boys, but always nice to see them. And then we only had three 1934s in the 30s. All three were Philadelphia. Take a look at this. I stuck this guy under the scope. Boom. We got a 1934 Philadelphia minted DDO. Unbelievable. 1934 Philadelphia minted DDO. How the heck was that missed? We will take that all day. Can't get mad at that. Now, again, these are in low grade, but this is a little bit better than a low, low grade. I would say this is at least G4. If I'm lucky, maybe they'd squeeze me out to a VG, but I doubt it. It looks like it's probably G4. But either way, checking PCGS, a 1934 DDO in G4 is 60 bucks. In a fine 12, it's 105. So I think this coin is somewhere between 60 and $100 in value. Again, probably the lower end of that, but you cannot get mad at that. That is an epic find. I have never found a 34P DDO in any of my hunts to go along with two 36Ds and a 38P. The 30s were phenomenal. Man, I wish I had more hunts like that when I get a chance to hunt old quarters, but I haven't bought a lot of old quarters lately because I've been sitting pretty nice on them. Makes me want to go back and get some more. Now that we've done the GWs, I'm going to flip these up, roll those up, and we'll take a quick peek at the Merc Dimes. For sake of time, I'm not going to be doing a variety hunt on the Roosevelt Dimes. I just too many here, and I want to get to my goodie bag over there next. Let me roll these up, and I'll let you know if we have anything great in the Merc Dimes. The Merc Dimes are pretty common. They are in decent shape for their age. The oldest one was a 1927 Philadelphia. Again, these are pretty much common in what you'd find in a junk silver purchase, although they are slightly better than what I normally see. We'll just leave those up. So far on the board, we've got some good finds. All in the quarters, hopefully the goodie bag has some goodies for me as well. Let's go ahead and crack that bag open next and take a peek inside and see what we got. We did a slow motion last time and there's not a lot in here. So we'll just do a regular dump out and uh, take a look. All right, not a whole bunch this time, but I do see some goodies. Let me sort them and bring you back. All right, we've got them sorted. We got a couple of commemorative halves. We got a 1925 Stone Mountain commemorative. Can't get mad at that. It looks like it's in decent shape to boot. And we've got an 1893 toned Christopher Columbus U.S. half dollar as well and uh, they made these in 92 and 93 and this is the 1893 one a little bit higher mintage than the 1892 but still a nice coin probably been cleaned as well but we'll take those as nice bonuses now that we've done that let me start with the barber half dollars and see if we have any good ones in that lot well here are the barber half dollars and actually they're not that bad we got two 1897 Phillies and an 1899 Philly. A slightly better date, 1900 S. It's only in G4 condition and it's probably been cleaned, but at the end of the day, we'll take it. We got a 1904 P, a 1906 P, a 1908 O, a 1909 P. We also got a 1910 S. Not really a better date, but slightly better because it has an S mint. But we also found a 1911 Denver. 1911 Denver is a much better date. Not that many of these bad boys minted. And uh, in this condition with, I think, a few let letters in Liberty showing. Ah, uh, you know what? You got the L, maybe. This is not going to qualify as a VG. It's probably a G4, but it's a nice G4 in its condition. We'll take it. 1911D. We got a 1912S and a better date 1914S as well. 
The reverse has pretty good detail, but the obverse just has that L maybe showing. Yeah, once again, just part of the L. So again, in G4 shape. But at the end of the day, we got one, two, three, four San Francisco minted coins, one a better date, we got a 1911D better date, and then we got the 1900S. So I'll have to compare these to the book to see if any of these are usable, but at the end of the day, two coins with less than a million minted found, I'll take that all day. Let me check them, compare them, and then move on to the Barber Quarters next. Well, we've got the Barber Quarters sorted. There are two better dates in here, which we'll get to. We got an 1896 Philly. Matter of fact, that's going to be a Philly. The 97's Philly, 98 Philly, 99. We got two of those, both Philly. 02 Philly, 04 Philly. But we also got a 1905 Philly. And any barber quarter from 1905 is a better date. So we'll take that, 1905P. Two 1907 Phillies, both, again, not in the greatest shape. But we also got two 1907 S's, and those are a better date as well. So we'll definitely choose the best of those two and see if it upgrades in my album. We got a 1908 O and a, 19, a couple 1908Ds, an 09P, 10P, two 14Ps, a 14D, 15D, and 16D. Most of these are in tough condition, but at the end of the day, I love seeing old silver. And we got that 05P along with two 07Ss. Can't get mad at that. I'm going to sort through those, see if anything upgrades, unlike the... Barber half dollars, we had no upgrades there. Hoping I get one or two upgrades in this lot, but I doubt it. We'll have to see. I'll come back and we'll do the SLQs next. Not much happening in the SLQs. They're all Philadelphia on the top row, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. But we did get a 1926 Denver in clean condition, but it is a slightly better date. A little bit of toning to it as well, but... No extra value in that condition. Still nice seeing a Denver minted 26, although it'd be nice to see a Denver or San Francisco minted 27, more importantly. Nothing fancy schmancy there. Let's check out the Barber Dimes next. Figured I would do the Barber Dimes with the seated dimes as well, since there wasn't much to look at. 1902P, 1907O, 08P, 11D, 13P, and 14D. The nicest Barber Dime of the lot is this 11 Denver with full Liberty just about, but still not much higher than maybe a fine grade on it. Still a cool one to see and we'll check it against the book. I'm a little disappointed right now because this hold seated dime is an 1877 CC. I'll put it under the scope in just a second for you to see. And then we also got a seated half dime, a better date as well. 1853-0, but it is warped and dented, as you guys can see. So both of those, despite being better dates, are in rough shape. And luckily, they placed the hole just adjacent to the mint mark so that we can clearly see that that's a Carson City. Man. Unfortunately, again, they're damaged, and they were the better finds. Let me go ahead and check these against the collection, and I'll be back with a wrap-up and some final thoughts. Well, fortunately, I did need the 1877cc dime in my dime collection, so I added it. The 1853 that has an O mint mark and is warped is a little bit better than the one I had because the one I had had a hole, so that upgrades. So we did get to use a couple of dimes for the albums, and that makes me happy. As far as this hunt went, it was actually a very productive and fun hunt, and we added a lot more silver to the stack. At the end of the day, in recap for the better finds, couple of commemorative half dollars and a couple of better date barber half dollars. We got a better date barber quarter and an entire 25 through 30 type three set for the SLQs, including a 26 D, which you can't get mad at. We found a 34 P DDO FS 101 and we found a slightly better dates, three of them, although in G4 or less condition, we'll still take those. We found five type B reverse quarters. Unfortunately, none of them are graders, but they might upgrade the collection, which I will check. Like I said, I'll never get mad going through constitutional or 90% junk silver, if you will, because you never know what goodies you'll get when you buy it in bulk. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this junk silver purchase and hunt. If you did, I'd appreciate that thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting. 
and thanks for watching.